Discord. Okay, so this is the beginning of the meeting. Some of the HTML basics, the, the, we're talking about tags and the doc type is not necessarily a tag, uh, just tells the, tells the browser what type of document it's gonna be, whether it be um, HTML or it could be XML, it could be a lot of different things really, well, not a lot, but quite a few. And then you have, in order to start your HTML documentation, uh, your document, you let the browser know, okay, this is this is where my HTML tag, this is where HTML starts, and this is where it stops. So the beginning and the ending of that document. Um, on this lesson, we won't get a, won't get really a lot into meta meta information, but since it's brought up here, like it's showing here, the character set UTF-8. There's several, there are quite a few actually character sets that you can use that will allow certain characters to be, to be displayed on your browser. UTF-8, um, I guess in a way, just kind of consider that as the English language um, without trying to go into too much detail. But if you want to know about car, some people call it char set, I call it character set. Um, so whatever you want to call it, you can just do a Google search on different char set types. All right, and then it shows the title of the page title of your page goes here. What that's going to do is up at the top where you have your tab, that's going to be what is displayed in that tab. So whatever you have in between the title tags is going to be displayed in the, uh, on your, on the top of your tab. <laughs> and that actually, that doesn't really complete the head section. I have another document set up to kind of show you a little bit more, but in this case we have the opening head tag and the closing head tag. So here we started the HTML, then we go into the head, close the head, now we're getting into the body. This is the, the open the body and close the body. This is mainly what the user is gonna see. So consider this as your setup, what is in the header, and then this will be actually what's mainly what is displayed. And then you finally close it out with the closing HTML tag. What goes in the body? Rip. Glad I got you muted. Don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll show you exactly how this works um, in the document that I set up, but it's showing you here you have the header, uh, the H1 opening and closing, the H2 opening and closing. The reason they have dot, 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 because there's three, four, five, and then finally six. There's six different types of headers, and it'll show you H1, H2, Forget about the dot, dot, dot for now, and then the H6. So you can see that they go from large to small. So if you see that H1, H2 in your document, um, that's what that does. It's just an automatic to let you know to make the, uh, to let the browser know to make it bigger or smaller, make your text bigger or smaller. And then you have paragraphs, um, opening with a, with a P. You open the tag, I didn't mention this before, you open the tag with a less than sign and you close it with a greater than sign. That's, that's the beginning tag. And then the ending tag is less than with a slash with, in this case, a P with your greater than sign. And if you notice here, if, and I'll show you when we, when we actually do the live version, just typing in text and then putting P's around them doesn't do anything. So I could have this, just that word typed into my text document, save it and run it in the browser it'll show up a certain way. If I put the, the opening and closing P in there, uh, it's not gonna change that in any way, shape, or form. But what it will do is if I had the word paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, all on one line, and then I separated each one with the, with the P tags, then when you hit, when you hit to, to run it in your browser, it'll come out like this. And that'll become a little clearer, hopefully, when I get into the live, the other live part. So I can show you here, the line breaks. You, you can see here there's a, an opening P and a closing P. What this also does for you is it helps you see it better in your, in your document. So as you're going through and you're going, oh, wait a minute, where's this, where's that? Of course, you can do a search for it, but then you know that that's contained within that, those P, the opening and closing paragraph tags. To, to get a line break, if you notice back here, when I have open, close, open, close, open, close, a lot of PP, there's a space here, a big space in between. 
Whereas when I use the BR, which is just a blank return, you're not gonna have that space. So like it's showing here, imagine there's no heaven, blank return, it's gonna just drop to the next line. So a figure on a figure on a typewriter, it's like boom, 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 hit return one time. It's gonna drop it to the next line. Uh, it says this tag does not need to be closed since it doesn't, this word basically means what? It doesn't include anything. It doesn't surround anything. Um, what One of the practices um, that I've gotten into is you type the, the lowercase, or the, excuse me, less than, BR space forward slash close. So it becomes a self-closing. That's just kind of a habit that I got into through, uh, through other HTML uh, type languages. You have lists, and in this case, this is just one uh, example of a list. You have an unordered list as designated by the UL. Each of your individual list items will have an opening and closing LI, and then however many you want, and then you close your unordered list with a slash UL. You can see the re repetition. Why yet? He can see it too. That's he said, I've had enough of this. Let me close this door. Hopefully he won't scratch to come in. But that's how it comes out. It comes out with the little dot there. Uh, that's like the bullet for that particular uh, item. You can also have what's called an ordered list. So you have the OL and then the same thing. The list items are designated LI and close LI on each list item that you want. But in this case, it's going to default to, to a numbering system. There's other ways that you can add in after the OL, put a space, and then there's other code that you can put in there to make it different things. You can make it like a Roman numeral, Roman numeral make it ABCD, uh, make it lowercase uh, Roman numerals, lettering, that sort of thing. Uh, again, if there's anything that's on here, you can either ask me or just or ask Google. How do I make, uh, how do I change my ordered list numbering system, for example? Some other things, uh, this EM will italicize, they call it em emphasize, but it, you can see it, it changes it to italics, the old way of doing things, instead of the EM, it used to be just an I for italics. Um, and then if you want to bold something, the old command, and it'll still work if you put a B and then put a closing B here, same thing, but it's recommended to kind of keep up with the Joneses, keep up with the speed of things, um, to go ahead and use the use the strong, just kind of get into that habit. And then the, for an image, you're gonna use the less than sign to open your tag, greater than to close it, and then in this case, you have IMG, which lets the, the browser know that, hey, they're looking for an image. Okay, so where's that image at? It's at a particular source, SRC, so image source equals, quote, HTTP, blah, blah, blah. You're just going to put the link of your image, close the quote, and then this little bit of information can be helpful for search engine optimization. And that's also, if this image does not show up, this text will show here instead. So it'll be, you may get that little break box. I know some of you have seen it with like a little little red X or a little broken image symbol that'll kind of be up in the corner or maybe in the center. But then this text should show up where the image should be if that image is broken for some reason. Uh, a link, we kind of went over this quickly earlier, but a href, and then the, the link that you want to go to, the text, and then close your a tag. This text will show in the document, something like this, and it makes that clickable. You see my little, I think you guys can see my cursor, so you could probably see the little hand pop up when I hover over that. That means it's a clickable link. Now what they're showing you here, this is getting just a little bit deeper. Here we're using the, the link, and here we're using the image, and then here we're closing the, the ahref. 
So that makes this image clickable now. So instead of having the text here, we have an image there. So that's how you make an image uh, to where when you click it, it'll take you to that particular link. Uh, it's telling you here that you have HTML validators. Browsers will often render HTML that has mistakes in it using different color error, blah, 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 blah. WC, W3C has a validator. So for those of you who are just kind of getting started, uh, whoops, I did my mouse button there. Those of you just getting started, you can go do a Google search on W3C validator, and then it'll help you check your HTML5 document to see how it's, it, it, uh, if it, you have any detected errors. I don't ever use them. I just kind of, I turn my error reporting system on and then just, you know, and just kind of look at it and figure it out. But in the beginning, it's something you might want to do. <laughs> but it shows here when you're on your own and trying to code HTML, do a search for the tag you're using, such as image tag or list item tag, and you'll usually find good references at the top, meaning at Google's or Google or W3 schools is a, is a good, I use W3 schools even to this day, constantly. Because there's certain things I might go, how did I, Wait a minute, what did I put in to change the font? Do I go font or font family or when do I use it? Do I use it in CSS? Do I use it? So I, I refer to W3 schools a lot. And when you type something like this in Google, like image tag or list item tag or HTML tag or whatever, a lot of times that W3 schools will come right to the top. Um, and I think that's it for this documentation. Dogs, you need to settle down when I'm doing this. All right, so let me come over to here. Boom, 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 drag some of these over. This is actually um, brackets for Windows. This is my text editor, um, a new one that I just kind of started messing with. You're gonna have to wait. And don't pee on nothing. And then in this case, I'm just gonna use Chrome. Let me resize this just a little bit so you can see both of them. Now, one of the reasons I came to this document here is eventually we're going to be learning Bootstrap. And I know a lot of you have heard of Bootstrap. It's what, what kind of helps make your document more responsive. And by, by responsive, I mean when you look at it on a, a wide screen and somebody looks on, an, on a narrower screen, it's going to act a certain way. And then even and then when you get like down to the laptop size or iPad or iPhone, it's going to act a totally different way. And there's ways that you can manipulate to say, okay, if these people are looking at it on an iPhone, this is what I want them to see. And if they're looking at it, looking at it on a, uh, an iPad, this, I, they can see a little bit more. So let me change the, the layout uh, all the way up to a, to a, a bigger screen. But one way to, that will help you learn HTML <clears throat> is to, on any document, as long as they don't have it blocked, and even then there's ways to get around it, right-click on the document, not on an image, because if you get an image, it's going to come up different, but just right-click somewhere on the page that's not an image and not a link. And, and each browser is a little bit different, but look for this type of wording here. It says view page source. Let me actually expand this out a little bit. This is actually what makes up that entire document there. All this code. So you can see here, here's your navigation items. You're gonna start with your navigation bar, whether it's active, so on and so forth. This is all bootstrap related information. One of the reasons that I came to this particular document is because I wanted to extract this. This is a very basic layout of HTML. So you can see here it's called example.com. So if you were to go there and right click and view the page source there, you're gonna see that it's very, very basic information. It's pretty much the stuff that we covered. The only thing that we haven't done is the, um, the styling just yet. We haven't covered that. Let's see how we're doing on time, it's 8.30, okay. 
Um, so the next thing I want to show you is, and you can do this on any web page. Now, what it won't do for you is if you're looking at a particular website, let's say, uh, I don't know, shockwave traffic, and, and you say, how do they, or, or traffic fusion, and you go, hey, I want to figure out how they do the surfing for referrals thing, and I'm going to copy that. That's pretty much not going to happen because that's all written in a different language. And we'll get into some of that language later, but it's not necessarily viewable to the general public just by right clicking. Um, you got to kind of hack. <laughs> you got to hack to get to that stuff. Um, so let me close that. We'll go back here to this example domain, and now let me show you here. This. This here on the right side being my editor. And this here on the left side being the uh, Chrome in this case. And what I'm going to do is the first thing is, like I said, in order to create an HTML page, you want to have an H HTML opening tag and an HTML closing tag. Then the next thing under the HTML is going to be the head. And, and like I was saying earlier, this is more like the um, uh, setup of your document. So I guess that'd be the kind of the best terminology you use there. And what I mean by setup is you're going to put in your title and any styling that you want to do coming back over to here. Oops. Let's go to and right click and view source. This is what I meant by the styling. So if we wanted to take this information, and paste it in, we'd paste it right in between these brackets here and basically see what, what it's going to do to our page. And then the body. So you have, this is as it said in that, in that um, lesson plan that, that I went through, that's where the, everyone is going to see what's in here, what you build in here. And in this case down here, if you look on the left side, you're going to see this is all contained within the body. Body open, then, and then the div, we haven't talked about divs yet, and then the information, and then another div. Now if I save this, and I go back over here, and I refresh it, the only thing that changed was right up here on the tab where it says, this is my page, because that's what I have set into the title, this is my page. Uh, mine doesn't have the one, two, three, et cetera, the notepad is a text editor. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of get into that. You hate div tags. You're going to learn to love them, though, promise, especially when we get into bootstrap. You're going to look at it and go, I could have had a, v, uh, a V8. a V So in this case, we're going to put in here H1, which is the biggest. H2 is not the biggest. H3 is the last biggest. H4 is not the least biggest, H5 is the, not the most smallest, and H6 is the smallest of its class. And let me show you what happens here. When I save it, and I come over here and I reload it, now I have something. See, it's not showing the tags, it's not showing any of this stuff here, or any of the stuff that's within brackets, it's only showing what's in between the tags. I could even type something out here and go, this is outside of the H junk. Or as Rip would say, the H package. Don't touch my package. See? So it's just gonna kind of put it into a, a standard unformatted text um, text type thing. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And then it's it's showing, I put in here a paragraph tag. This is the body of the document. This is another line. So let me back up and say this is the body of the document, save it. Now remember, I took this part out, so that's going to disappear. All this stuff will continue to stay there. Refresh it. This is the body of the document that's in between the paragraph tag. Then here, this is another line. I'm going to save that, reload it. See the, the large space that's in between here? 
That's because it's going from one paragraph, quote unquote, paragraph to the next paragraph. Now, if I do something else and I say, this is the body of the document, this is another line, this is a double line with, this is a double line with blank return, and you'll see the forward slash, what I was talking about that didn't show it in the other, um, in the lesson plan. This is just kind of a habit that I've gotten into, but it says no space in between the lines. This is a double line with no space. So save it, reload it. See, so there, this is a double line with, which is this part here. You're not gonna see the BR, but that's just a blank return, and it's only gonna drop it one line, set it to, like it did here. Notice also that between the H's, there's gonna be more space in between as well. It's because it kinda sorta works like the paragraph tag would. All right, so have I punished you guys enough? I'm looking over here at the text chat. What's with the P? Okay, clear it and do it again. All right. First of all, let me just let me let me explain what's with the P. To Char. I don't. I'm not sure when you came in, Char, and what you caught and what you didn't. But these are called tags. All these things with without the slash, without the forward slash. Those are called tags. No, you won't get a handout. No, I said it is. Okay, maybe I misunderstood. Um, now, Deb, you wanted me to back up and do it again? Oh, I can't actually get past that point. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. You need to pay more attention, yeah, again. Um, let me see, let me back up. This is about as far as I can get because I had everything set up and then I deleted each section one at a time. So I'll just kind of walk through with, what, with what's there. You're gonna open your document with HTML and you're gonna HTML tag and you're gonna close it with a forward slash HTML. The, the head, which is kind of basically your setup of your document, is gonna have your title, your styling from the, the style sheet, which is called CSS, and then close the head. So okay, we're done with our setup, let's move down and go to the body. So you're gonna have an opening tag for the body and a closing tag for the body. Just like in between you have the, the, the head, this is a different um, header, if you will, and close it. And open the H2 and close it. Open the H3, open the H4, open the H5, close each one of them. Yeah, Jen, thanks for being late. We set this up for you, just for you at this time. Everybody waited for you. But, you know, what are you going to do? We'll, get, we'll let Legacy get you in line come Monday. So let me move forward. And then the, the paragraph tag is an opening P with a closing P. So anything that's in between that is gonna be controlled by the, the P tag. And that doesn't mean you gotta go P. Every time you type it, you don't have to go P. Just use the P tag opening and closing. And I'll, I think we have time where I can kind of show you what I mean by controlling. Uh, and then we're gonna. Then I just showed an example of another P tag, and then I showed another one where you can have where I'm basically nesting a very simple nesting. I have an opening P and a closing P, and then with a blank return, and that's going to result this. So if I have in this case an H whatever and another H whatever, it's going to leave a big gap. And if I have a, a, a paragraph tag followed by closing, followed by another paragraph tag opening, it's also going to leave a gap. If I have a BR, it's only a one-liner. It's just going to drop it by one line. So that's kind of what that's shown here. Now let me see if, yeah. Okay, good. Um, 
what I wanted to see is, let me see if I still got that document. Hold on one second here. Move this over here and go. Desktop, I think is where I saved it. No. Um, so let's do it this way. Let's come here and view the page source. And I'm going to take this entire code. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to select everything in here and I'm going to paste it. So now what I have is I have the source code for this. So if I wanted to, I could save that. Um, I could save it and run it in my browser, but we don't need to do that because I just want to show you, I wanted to have the, the, the HTML markup and the CSS over on one side with the page on the other side. In this case, they were using a doc type HTML. I personally find it redundant um, because you're doing a, an opening HTML tag here. I do use doc type for other types of documents. Sometimes I'll use this. Not a bad habit to get into. Um, I kind of briefly touched on the, the, the character set, and in this case, using UTF-8. Now, one thing you're going to notice in the, a lot of the LFMTE sites, they don't use the UTF-8, so sometimes you might get stray characters that kind of come out. Um, but here, yeah, well, that's right, stray characters come out in legacy sometimes too. Um, in, in this case... In this case, what this is telling what this is telling the browser is to scale your content basically within whatever the width of the device is, and the initial scale is going to be one, meaning it's not zoomed in and it's not zoomed out. Yep, especially when I'm there, Ken. That's right. Now the body, um, which is going to be picked up down here in the body tag. So we have the body tag, but up here in the CSS styling, it's saying I want the body background color to be this color. And that just so happens to be this gray color that you see here. So when we were talking about the divs before, it's saying I want my div to be a, a width of 600 pixels. So from here to here is gonna be 600 pixels. <clears throat> and that's where the, automatically that's gonna control what this div does. There's other ways to get even even deeper into that control, but um, and then you're gonna have a little bit of margin, a little bit of padding, and the background color. This just happens to be white. Now, what what you're seeing here are hexadecimal codes, which, if you're looking at the full six-digit code, this is gonna be red, green, and blue. So that's the varying shade that actually creates, if you watch hover over, you should be able to see that little pop-up. It's gonna be almost like a navy blue. What the A link and A visited is, if you ever notice some websites, when you click on a clickable link, before you do, it's a certain color, but then after you do, it might turn like purple, might turn purple and be underlined and that kind of thing. What this is doing is it's saying, whether it's, whether it's just the link and they have not visited it, or it's a link and they have visited it, 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 make it the same color regardless. And the text decoration, the default mainly is to underline a link by setting text decoration to none. That means that that link is not gonna, it's not gonna be underlined. Now any link that would be on this page, if I put a hundred links on this page and I didn't specify any kind of ID or name or anything like that, this will control all those links. So all the links on that page will be, uh, be under this particular control. Now with this, at media, this is when you start getting into like your different devices, uh, whether it be a, a smaller screen or a, 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 a mobile phone or a tablet. And to give you an example, what it's showing you here, well, first of all, let me just say that the width and the border, radi the border radius set to zero versus up here, border radius is set to one EM. In this case, that's what gives you that little curve there around, around the border. So if you, if you want a nice looking box, that's how you'll get it. 
and you could change, you know, change your radius up or down or whatever uh, by point. So it could be like 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 could be 0.75, depends on how much, you know, what kind of curves you're looking for on your box. Um, <clears throat> and then in this case, when the max width is 700 or below pixels, it's going to change a few things. Now the background color is going to be white instead of gray. And watch what happens to the box. I'm going to just take this and simulate a larger screen, larger screen, boom. Now it goes to a smaller screen. You can see how it, that nice box went away. The, the background color is no longer gray. All the information is still there. It didn't take any actual images because there weren't any. But now when I pop this open, you'll see what they call a break point. That's roughly a break point right there when it makes that change, makes that transition. So when they talk about, when you hear people talk about websites being responsive, basically this is what they're talking about. It responds based on the, based on the type of device that you're on. And that's, this is kind of the way that that'll be set up. Not the only way, but this is a, a large part of that. So it is 8.43. Let me, I haven't really been watching the chat because I've been kind of focused on when every once in a while I'll glance over there, but uh, let me stop the screen share. And let me see, how do I unmute everybody? It's probably going to be total chaos at first. Who's a, who has a question? And I can unmute their mic. No questions? So you got everything. Anything goes in legacy. Ha, ha, ha. No, I do. All right, Deb, where you at? Let me unmute you. Speak. Okay, can you hear me? No. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, I started to build a template on Notepad. Mm -hmm. I got as far as my carrot, HTML a carrot, and then under that I have a carrot with head carrot, and then under that I have carrot title, carrot my page title, forward slash title, carrot. And then I got lost right there with the div tags. What in hell is a div tag and why do we need them? And are they going away from HTML with div tags? Is that why my site that I want to work on on Chit Chat I have such a hard time with because of those div tags? It's not always because of your div tag. A div tag. And let me just back up just for a moment and say that the CSS, what CSS is, it stands for cascading style sheets. And what that means is when you make a change to something here, it's going to cascade down to everything that uses that particular file. That's why at the top of your document, if you have style and then close style and then stuff in between, like I was showing you, you know, whatever set in the div, whatever set for the background, for the body, so on and so forth. Um, any change that I make above that could be blocked by that because I only want that to take place on this page. So everything looks good. And everything is going to be used from the, the main CSS file that you have. It's a separate file. But then when you set the individual styling for that page, then you can go in and set it. It's not really a good practice to get into uh, because here's what happens. You get down to that point where you're styling and you're individually styling each page. And now you're getting away from the, the whole purpose of why you have a cascading style sheet. But I just kind of wanted to show you the, the basic breakdown. Now, back to your question on a div. When you start getting more and more into bootstrap, okay. a div is just like a, call it a container. I guess that'd be the, the best way to call it to be a container. So you have your opening div and your closing div. And then anything in between that, kind of like a paragraph or kind of like an H1, H, H, you know, H1, close H1, H2, whatever, whatever. And your, your PPs, uh, anything that's in between that is is in between those tags call that like a, a type of a container a div is the same thing so you could have a div and then you could have your paragraph tag or like your h1 with your information and close your h1 and then have a p 
with a blah, 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 and close the P, and then close your div. Why do that? Because it's now it's within that container. So I can take that container and through the use of CSS by changing the margins, by changing the background, uh, assign it, to, assign an ID to it, so I can specifically target that any div with that particular ID or that particular name or that particular class. Again, we'll get into all that uh, as we move on. Um, but you're familiar with tables, uh -huh. divs basically will replace tables okay that's kind of the that's kind of the method to the madness and that's sort of kind of what bootstrap is supposed to be doing although a lot of people still fall back and use tables when they can't do it with a div they just kind of go up oh, you know what this is too difficult i'm tired of playing with this okay are we going to in your classes are we going to start from the very first where you had that um first page and then you copied it and put it over and you had the one two three four fives and all that are we going to start right from there and be able to create our own as you go or are you going to do currently I don't have a particular project in mind like okay let's develop this let's make this particular web page now I guess that's what I could do really I wanted to see the level of interest and we got we have 20 participants which is is very good and as people say, you know what, I kind of enjoyed and I could see where we're going with this thing. You can tell me what you want. You guys tell me what you want to see and we'll make it happen. You cool. know what I mean? You just Very want, cool. If you want to create now, see, because most of the people that are in here, I know there's going to be a few here and there that are not um, LFMTE, so I don't want to target just LFMTE folks or LFMTE right. folks. Well, um, I know how to build web pages. Um, Sharon, that's here, Char. She right. is um, from another program that I am in as well. And I actually teach HTML web design over in there. But what you're showing us is in depth a lot more of what I need now for my particular traffic exchanges. Mm -hmm. Because chit chat traffic is responsive. It's got the div tags when I try and edit it in my editor. I use Microsoft um, front page. No, Microsoft, the, the big one. I have the full blown version. Dreamweaver? No, I don't use Dreamweaver. I use Microsoft. Well, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, um, it lets me do my div tags. It lets me do all that. But I don't know how to set them in where they need to be because I always mess up my front page when I try and edit it because it is responsive and because it's got div tags and because it's got um, CSS, it's got all the things you talked about on that one page. Okay. Are you talking about through your editor and admin? Nope. I'm talking about my editor. If I go into my admin and go to edit my sales page, get my code out of there and drop it into my editor. Okay, <laughs> I totally fuck it up. No, excuse okay. your language. Um, okay. This is not legacy. <laughs> excuse me, I apologize. Bad girl. Okay, but, but do you understand what I'm saying? Yep, I know that, exactly. That's what my well, interest is. Thanks, Ken. I know, I know what you're saying, and I, the reason I was laughing because I said, you mean your editor through admin? And you go, no, in, in admin, in my editor, <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I don't write letters because I write like I talk. <laughs> Here's what you do. Here's what you do for anyone else out there having the same type of issue. Take that, whatever's in that section, get, get your mouse in that area, hit Control A, and that's going to highlight everything. Hold down Correct. your control key, hit A, highlight it all. Correct. Then hit Control C which is going right. to copy that. Mm -hmm. bring that, bring that over to a text document. Okay. Once you get it into your text document, hit, you know, open up whether, whatever editor you want to use, whether it be, I would recommend for those that are on windows, maybe use note, notepad plus plus paste it right in there. Now you can start to kind of see the layout because sometimes when you paste it in that editor or somebody's in there, just kind of quickly adding things, that's a little hard to kind of get your tab spacing correct. And what I mean is, as you noticed in that document, I had the HTML and then it went over 
and then it said title and then it went, then it dropped down and it said style and then style and then yes. it went back over to body. It, basically what that is is indentation. So that as you're looking at your document, you can see and you can kind of see the flow of where mm -hmm. something starts and where something ends. If you're, if you're not using that type of indenting, when you come back later to look at it again, you're going to be doing this. That is exactly where I have my issue. Right. So pull that over into a text document and clean it up first. Get all your tabbing straight and kind of look and see, okay, maybe I have a div tag that's open, and but down here, where does it close? Oh, you know what? That div tag never closes. That's my problem. So let's see, where do I need to close the <laughs> tag? A lot of times, too, I'll get div tags that are four and five in times right in a row after each other, but there's nothing in between them. Sometimes you get that. So, well, it depends. If you mean opening or closing. Uh-huh. It would be an open dib tag, just open dib, open dib, open dib, open dib, and then a closing dib. Where do I, how do I get rid of the ones that are open so that um, they're gone because it's messing up the code? It's making it hard for me to work on it. Take them out. Yeah, but then what if I take those out and it delete something else? That's why you have your document that you, when I told you to pull it over into another document. Okay. Because then you could just hit control Z and undo it. Okay. And then copy it from your text document back in, paste it in, hit save. And plus there's also a way that you in, in your editor within the uh, back office or an admin to, to <coughs> restore a previous version. Yes, I've used that many times. It right. doesn't always quite work the way that you want to, but the majority of times it will. Awesome. Okay, James, I'm going to be quiet and let somebody else talk. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. Please, please, please keep going. I will. I paid, for, I paid for this service for a year, so I'll be doing it for at least a year. Cool. Thank you. Read okay. what Terry just, and read what Terry just said. For every div tag, you have to have a closing div tag. No, there's not. <laughs> it's, that's, well, I'll, I'll give you some of my code to look at and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yep. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Shut me up now. Let somebody else talk. Anyone else? Even if it is a hot mess, we can untangle it. We can definitely untangle it. Any other questions for this? I know it was kind of basic and I know we went through a lot of information fairly quickly, but I don't want to really keep, you know, I don't want to keep you guys two, three, four hours trying to learn. What I learned in the Navy was, as being an instructor, you teach for 50 minutes and then you take a 10 minute break, teach for 50, take a 10 minute break. And it, it, people have a tendency to get to, to stay more active and, and awake. And, and wanting to learn. Yes, Renee, I will be sending an email each week. What I recommend is to get onto the actual website because I'll also be using Genix. Genix. So sign up for that. Um, the website itself is still under development. Um, so just kind of bear with me on that but just get signed up with it. And eventually I'll probably be selling, you know, banner ads and that kind of thing for people that are, that are coming through there. Might even leave the surf active. I don't know what we're doing. Yes. Maxscape.com. And whoever invited you to this, Renee, if you'll let me know, just hit me up in Skype or something so I can make sure that you kind of go under that person. If you just, you know, if you heard about it in the CTP room today with uh, when Terry posted it, then I'll put you into Terry. How much, what, how much money? It's not, there's not any money. That is, yes, that is where, sign up where, maxscape.com. Right above where Renee posted it and it's free. These courses are gonna be free and I intend to keep them remaining free. Right, right Ken, but you know who you're going under, Marcus. <laughs> there you go, Renee. So when you get signed up, um, just let me know that you're signed up, and then I'll just jump right in and put you under, put you under Terry. Okay, under me. 
I'll put I'll put you under Kim's thumb. Oh, wait a minute, you're over there. Okay, Renee, I'll go to make that change. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for this week. And if you guys would like to have Tell me what you would like to see. My whole thing is I want to transition between HTML, get a little deeper into uh, CSS, and then start talking more about Bootstrap and how Bootstrap is laid out. And then eventually, kind of once we get past that sort of thing, let's start talking about PHP. Because PHP, basically what PHP does, PHP writes your HTML for you. And what I mean by that is you can call from a call information, say from a database and say, based on the name, uh, first name, last name, uh, email address, that sort of thing. Let me pull from the database and so rather than writing that code a thousand times over and over yourself. You just put in that what's called a loop where it'll just kind of, it'll get loopy on you. And it'll say, as long as, as long as files exist that we pulled from the database, go ahead and print it out print it, whether it be in a paragraph tag, an H1, an H2, a table, divs, however you lay it out yourself. And then when you hit that page or refresh, it goes out, pulls 10,000 records, pulls it back in, and then spits it out how you want it. You can order it, you know, set it any order that you want. Um, there's, a, there's a lot you can do with PHP that you cannot do with HTML. PHP, if you remember back at that diagram I showed in the very beginning, PHP resides on the server. JavaScript relies re, resides on the on the client. So on your computer is where the JavaScript magic happens, and on the server side is where the PHP magic happens. All right. So if there is not any further questions, um, you guys can get a hold of me either through Skype or uh, I'll put up a a support link eventually on the page. Most of you know me uh, that I'm, I hang out in Legacy Monday through Friday. Uh, go and listen to Brian's show every Saturday. Um, listen to Rip's show every Saturday. If you're, if you're not aware, let me say this. Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Ken Locatelli and, and, and Rip and Marcus and, and Doug get on camera um, and Talk business, talk bull, have fun, whatever. Um, but that's Monday through Friday from 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until whenever. Uh, usually around 10-ish is the average, right? Who's Marcus? He's that guy that you see is on the fourth camera that's like this. Most of, uh, most of the time. Uh, also, if you don't know, Sound Surf Live, Brian Cullen, uh, he does his, his uh, Sound Surf Live party, um, usually at uh, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I believe the time start time is. And then Rip is Ron on the radio at fullgamutradio.net, F-G-R-N. Rip, can you type your, if you're still here, can you type your link in? F-G-R-N.net, fullgamutradionetwork.net. There you go. What RIP does is at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Saturday, RIP gets on the radio and he takes contributions from a lot of the different TE and, and VM owners and then plays music and uh, takes requests and things like that. And then he gives away whatever them prizes are. So like I personally, from TE Surfers Unite and Lifetime TE, I, I actually give away uh, one month upgrades some people give away a thousand banners, thousand credits, whatever the case may be. But go to fgrn.net, look at his website, and there's a there's a link on there where you can look and see what the prizes are, and also see what the schedule is. Um, so that's that, and that's all I got. Now it's on to walk, watch The Walking Dead season seven. Uh, second half is coming on. It's actually probably already started. But I uh, just want to make sure that I got, got caught up with everyone and didn't have any further questions. We'll be doing this again every week, every Sunday. If you guys need it more often or if you can't make it on Sunday and you've got a better time frame, as long as it doesn't conflict with other things that I just mentioned, I'll be happy to do it, even if it's one-on-one. -on -one. All right, you guys take care and have a good one. Let me uh, stop the recording.